Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I've been hacking things my whole life. I want to give you a quick update on the maker shop, building a maker shop. I first updated you quite depressingly about a year ago where I explained um, that, oh, it was more difficult than I thought, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I was overwhelmed at that point, but that was that I had no idea what was about to come. So over the last year, I have start up, started up a meetup group and I now have 90 members that has not been helpful in terms of building this shop and building this, this hack space, hacker space, hack lab. It has been very motivating to just be around other makers, okay? So there was things that um, really set me back. Like, honestly, the, the, the thing that threw me the biggest loop was just the chaos of the space, what it was doing to my brain to have so many things going on. So I decided that I was gonna do something about it. So I put um, a bunch of project names in a hat and I would, when I, go in, when I went into the shop, I decided um, I'm gonna pull a, a, this little thing out, like you know, pull your name out of a hat type thing. And then the project would tell me what to do that time. And thing, there were things like clean, um, clean the shop, make a jig, make something useful, um, go ahead and organize um, some of the, um, the drawers that I have, which are in terrible shape, organize tools, make a box, make a pen, that type of thing. That's really helped. I'm now taking that to another step and I'll do a project video on this is I'm gonna do a roulette wheel, which basically allows me to spin a wheel and that has a whiteboard on it and it can help me decide, like it'll say, hey, Today, you are supposed to make something that makes sound like a guitar or something else like that. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I think that's a really good suggestion for um, a makerspace, even for a student makerspace or anything else you do, just to get warmed up, right? Why go through that laborious decision when you can let something else just happenstance or rolling of the dice take care of that? So that's really critical. So um, I wanted to, in this 10 minutes, give you an update on all the different stations in the garage and um, some of my biggest challenges and some of my biggest uh, successes, I guess. Uh, let's start over with the 3D printers. Okay, 3D printing, I had no idea um, what I was doing when I got going. I upgraded to these 3D printers by buying and selling printers on Craigslist. I bought two little ones, I underbought them, kind of fixed them up, maybe the extruders were broken, I kind of fixed those or just ordered new extruders. I sold those for double the cost and I finally got these and settled on these two printers um, because I liked the MakerBot brand. I liked how this smart extruder was actually just working, but I didn't know anything about them, right? But um, these are the two ones that I settled on. They can crank out quite a bit of stuff, but I'm not doing production stuff. I'm doing prototyping, okay? What's behind a 3D printer at the same exact time I got that was I started learning Fusion 360. That is a free to hobbyist and to um, students. And if worst comes to worst, you can pay $30 a month and have that. That is a 3D application that has some really cool capabilities like putting in variables. Once you change the variable of a base of something, all the variables change. The word is kind of complicated. I'll put that down below. It's called parametric modeling. But uh, if you want to learn that, I have videos. I have a whole playlist on Fusion with that. Also, I built a course on 3D modeling, um, how to, um, what markets to uh, sell your products at, how to print, how many printers you need. Um, like I started printing auto brackets, um, parts for RC cars. I did, I did flexible filament uh, tires. Tires are very expensive for RC cars. So if you consider this sort of made local community, you can do a lot with a 3D printer. Okay, next I'm gonna slide over to the CNC machine. I decided on getting a carbide 3Ds. Um, I'm gonna see if I can pronounce this right. Shape um, Oco, Shape Oco, it's a shape cutting machine, right? From Carbide 3D, it was around $1,500. And um, I, as soon as I got it, it was creating a lot of dust. So I worked on two different things. I worked on an enclosed cabinet, right? Everything that I did in this space was on wheels. I immediately, I fell in love with this machine, so I built a second spot that is waiting for a, another um, um, Shapeco XL that I would get on Craigslist or get it at a discount. And that for that one, I'm gonna use a drag knife, just a knife to cut out any packaging of things that I make in the shop that I wanna sell on my Etsy or eBay store. 
Okay, so um, I've also started working on my first uh, invention is making a dust boot that allows for the the CNC router to go all the way up to each end, the X and the Y. Um, and that is in pieces, it's not done. Um, I'm hoping to finish that soon now that I have a couple other new tools. Okay, now moving on, this space here will be my future um, Tormac CNC milling. I really have decided to dig into product design and I need to be able to mill or cut out aluminum parts. So um, I have my eye on a Tormac 440. It's the first CNC, um, it's their basic level CNC that Tormac makes. Um, so that's a dream of mine. So uh, this funny little cardboard thing is here what I've got to show you that that's where it's going to go. I also wanted to teach a workshop um, or workshops in this class for up to four students. So I got these four computers for pretty much um, uh, about a hundred dollars each and then I built these tables um, and I can have meetings and then I can convert it back over um, and I can teach fusion I can teach all types of digital stuff that I teach on my other channels here inside of the garage my niece and I have always laughed about calling this space or the garage university and I kind of think that th where things are going people are learning on their own but I just love to teach when I taught I just miss teaching so I don't really have that at my job right now um, so that's it all right moving around I insulated the garage doors absolutely huge for a sound barrier and to um, I only have two minutes left a sound barrier and to kind of control the light I, I cut the light out I have a whole video on that about how to insulate your garage doors it cost me about hundred and twenty dollars to get it to look like this brick moving on over I built a couple Ron Polk um, workbenches I have created this area as the backdrop of the, the hack lab show that I'm doing or, or the future project videos Along this wall, I have all of my tools, starting with my bandsaw, the drill press. I have a um, little sander, which is, I love. I have a small planer that I bought used. Oh, as a matter of fact, everything I bought used or Harbor Freight. Um, and then I have a um, grinder and a polisher. I have the big sander. Then I have my planer. Okay. So in total, I am probably around, um, I guess, $9,000 until I purchased this, which is the Glowforge that I recently got later. It is a laser cutter. It's basically another shape cutter, but it does it differently. It also engraves and it can potentially do 3D grayscaling. Um, so, and then to end with, um, the wall that I walk into and I'm interface when I first start things is, actually I'm not gonna, I have one other thing than that, but I'm, well, I have a minute is this is my charging wall. Charging batteries is absolutely critical. So I made this little pegboard that I'm able to, um, <clears throat> it's a big pegboard, that I put my vacuum and all of my charges for my drill and it, I will expand like that. Anything that I need to get quickly is on that wall that's by the door. So um, then I have, um, going around back to where I'm at now, is I have a, the, um, uh, just the mini lathe, the mini uh, metal lathe that I'm planning on doing pens. And then this area here that I'm currently looking at is where I do my live demos and I actually can get um, work done, video digital work, and this drives all of the machines. So I think this is quite a um, pretty good um, plan so far. Please comment below if you, or if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Just keep making things and connect with other people um, to motivate them to do that. Take care.